Hello everybody and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here and today I'm going to demonstrate for you this simple wetland scene in watercolour. I'm beginning today with a piece of Milford brand watercolour paper uh, taped onto my board. This is 100% cotton paper, cold pressed, size 7.5 inches by 11 inches uh, and I've got it laying flat. Um, and I've got a simple piece of masking tape stretched across the lower third uh, just as an easy way to keep a straight horizon line while I concentrate on uh, getting a really nice sip bright sky. The colours I'm using today are on screen at the moment. I'll also pop a full list of everything I'm using in the video description as per usual. So after putting a nice clean wash of water over the top part of the paper, I can paint my sky wet in wet. I'm beginning with some cerulean blue here on my large mop brush, followed by some ultramarine as well. This is such a lovely combination of colours for a lovely bright blue summer sky. I think they work really beautifully together, uh, complement each other hugely, and it just gives you that lovely extra... Uh, sort of movement and brightness in the sky that you get from using two colours rather than just uh, a single blue on its own. Now in this sky I wanted a little uh, wisp of cloud drifting across the centre here which is why I left a patch of white paper uh, which I am now enhancing using my paintbrush and just some clean water. Basically I'm just cleaning off and uh, mostly drying my brush so I've got a clean damp brush and then you can come in and pull out a little bit of uh, colour along the line that you want. Uh, I'll show you it again here. You can see that my brush has no extra colour on it, it's literally just a, a damp brush with a little bit of water and you can see just with these soft tapping motions I'm able to pull a little colour out of the sky and create this paler section of soft cloud. Now you can do this uh, with a tissue as well which is uh, perhaps more effective at getting back to white paper but it also can leave harder edges whereas uh, tapping with the brush in this way gives you a softer edge cloud and that's what I'm after today. And there we are, I'm happy with that. And now I'm just going to add a little more detail. Whilst this bottom part of the paper here is still nice and wet, I can put in some colour and it's going to diffuse upwards into the sky. Uh, even though my board is flat at the moment, the colour will still uh, be encouraged to run into the water that's already there. You can see the lines I'm putting in are already softening down really nicely and we're creating this sort of soft, distant tree line uh, along the horizon which is going to look really, really effective uh, and is a nice, simple way to get in uh, a little bit of detail early on in the painting. You can see I switched to uh, a smaller brush for this uh, just to have a little bit more control uh, but by all means you can use a larger brush if that's something you're more comfortable with. And the colour I'm using is some neutral tint here mixed with just a touch of ultramarine just to uh, remain in keeping with the colours that I've already got in the sky. You can see that already we're getting a lovely uh, and almost a bleed of colour, particularly on the right hand side as the, um, the thicker paint that I've put on is encouraged to push up and into the water that's already there on the paper. And you get these lovely sort of wispy soft edges to the marks that you put on. And now for an extra little pop of brighter colour, 
I'm adding uh, some burnt sienna. I've got it quite uh, richly, quite thickly on my brush here. And as you can see, I'm just delicately tracing the tip of it uh, along the line of masking tape. This is one of the reasons I've got the masking tape there. It makes this process so much simpler. You don't need to worry about the colour accidentally bleeding into the clean place that you want to leave to uh, put in the water or the land. You can just go ahead and pop in as much or as little as you like. Personally, I love how the Burnt Sienna works against these sort of bluer colours. I think it just gives you that wonderful little pop of colour. Really, really nice enhancement. And again, you can see it's just blooming up and into the paint that's already there really nicely. And of course, uh, when you remove your tape, do make sure to clean up any edges. You can see here I've got a little paint on the edge of my board here where it's seeped into the side of the tape. Uh, cleaning that up is important to avoid any sort of blooms and cauliflowers you might want to avoid. So whilst this is uh, just sitting and diffusing still, um, I'm going to carry on painting focusing on this lower section which is going to be a lovely wetlands uh, scene. So lots of bright water. I'm painting quite loosely with my large mop brush again to create some lovely blue water here. This is again basically a mixture of the ultramarine and a touch of cerulean and plenty of water to sort of uh, lighten it up. And I'm painting it um, quite loosely, quite roughly uh, with some dry brush making sure there's lots of uh, bright white paper peeking through and that's just going to give us that little glint of uh, sunlight on the water. With my small brush here I'm adding a touch of neutral tint watered down into um, the water as well just to give uh, a little bit of texture and a little bit of shadow. And now I'm also going to use it to encourage a little of the paint down from this tree line and picking up a bit of the darker paint as well and I'm just going to add in some really simple reflections. And naturally these, uh, these trees or bushes here in the distance would cast um, a darker shadow or reflection on the water beside them. So this is another nice simple little trick to just enhance your landscape painting. It's just pulling the colour down using a basically a paler version of the colours you've got already and just pulling it into the water here. You can see I'm doing it quite scratchily, quite scruffily, keeping lots of uh, white paper peeking through. Uh, again that lovely glint of sunlight on the water and just pulling that dark shadow down, almost mimicking the shape that I've got uh, coming up from the water in the reflections. But still keeping it really nice and loose and uh, really nice and simple as well. The brush I'm using here is just um, a small round brush. This is a quill brush from uh, Da Vinci. Um, but a flat brush would also work pretty well here as well. And now this uh, is how it looks now that I've left it to dry completely. So I'm really happy with the sky and that sort of first initial wash. You can see we've still got lots of lovely bright white paper uh, along the sort of bottom third here, which is uh, now where we are starting to put in a bit of land across this lovely sweep of water. So I'm using my sword liner brush, which is a favourite of mine, uh, and I'm just tapping it horizontally. Um, it makes these lovely simple marks, uh, lovely stretchy sort of loose dry brushing marks, and it's a great way, I think, to get uh, some natural looking land that looks like it is just sort of bellying up from the water, just peeping up. Um, but of course, this is um, my preferred technique. You can always use something else. I think um, a flat brush would be great here as well because again, that gives you those sort of flatter horizontal planes of land peeking up from the, uh, from the water. Or of course, um, also a round brush or a mop brush would give you, uh, give you some lovely interesting shapes as well. 
but with the sword liner brush you can see I'm able to easily switch around after having put in the land details and just start pulling up some of the darker paint and uh, adding some little spiky marsh grasses uh, and reeds just sort of um, starting to build up the detail uh, in this foreground. You can see here that I'm just basically tapping the length of the brush along the paper and it's actually giving me these lovely almost dry brush style marks without the need for uh, <laughs> any actual real dry brushing is so almost a cheat in a way but this effect would also be achieved with a, a different shaped brush if you don't have a sword liner. I just uh, like the shape of this brush and uh, how sort of uh, long it is it gives you just some really lovely interesting marks. So as you can see, I've just skipped the recording ahead a little bit just because I'm repeating exactly the same process uh, on this other, on this left hand side of the painting. Just you can see the, uh, the little marks I've made from tapping my brush uh, and getting those little spits of darker coloured land popping up. And now I'm just adding some more spiky reeds and grasses just really loosely with the liner brush exactly the same technique as I just showed you and uh, basically uh, all that matters here is that you build up the land um, and according to how you want your painting to be and what makes for you a, a really nice uh, balanced composition. So now I'm happy with the composition so far with the spread of land on either side uh, I'm just going to add an extra little detail in the form of this fence uh, into the foreground and this is just going to be a really simple uh, rustic kind of run down looking sunken fence. You can see I'm varying the height of these posts. I'm going to do a couple of little shorter broken ones here just using the edge of my flat brush uh, and uh, it's a really nice simple way to get an extra detail into your landscape painting. Uh, and if you're using a flat brush like this to get these nice uh, straight crisp lines then uh, it's actually a really uh, simple technique and um, it's almost <laughs> feels almost like a cheat in a way because it is simple and effective and also really fun. <laughs> so all I'm going to do now is join up these fence posts quite loosely uh, using the tip of my sword liner but just use any uh, fine brush to get uh, a nice line here. I'm going to drift that line down. We've got a little bit of rope or wire perhaps hanging loose, joining these fence posts together. And you can see I've uh, popped my fence basically just along one of those spits of land I've created with the sword liner. But if uh, if you prefer, you can always have your, you know, leave that area clear and then have your fence post sticking up. Um, purely out of the water. Perhaps the uh, the marshland has grown and encroached upon what used to be farmland uh, and uh, covered up this pasture here leaving only the sunken fence as a reminder of uh, what once was. Or at least that's, uh, <laughs> that's my story for today's painting. And now I'm just going to add the reflections of the fence posts in the water and this is uh, really easy to do, you just need a small brush and uh, to just really loosely follow the line, basically mirror the line of the fence post, um, but do it quite loosely, you don't have to do it in a very very straight line, which is why you can see I'm not using the flat brush for this, I'm just using um, a small detail brush and basically just with a loose hand, just sort of wiggling it down, <laughs> if you'll pardon the phrase, uh, and getting um, a loose line that sort of follows the rippling of the water and the uh, texture of the cold press paper really helps here as well. And you want to make your reflection lines generally a little paler as well than the actual fence posts themselves. And that also just helps to uh, differentiate them out as well from, from the posts themselves. Now as a finishing touch 
um, I'm going to add some birds. Uh, I do love adding birds into my landscape paintings. I think they just give them that last little touch of life, of movement. So uh, for this one, seeing as it's a wetlands, I'm going to add a stain of geese. Normally I do my geese um, from the side profile. Um, so you can see their sort of little heads and necks outstretched but I wanted to show you a different way of doing them today and arguably this is a simpler way and in this painting they are coming straight towards us, the viewer so we're painting them head on and all you need to do is that big sort of curving sweep of wing which is uh, almost like a very very flat M shape and then just an extra little bit of bulk in the center of that M shape for the goose's body because they're quite sort of big um, heavy set birds and it's as simple as that and I find them to be most effective when you've got a decent amount <laughs> so I'm doing quite a large gathering of geese here I don't think that's quite the right collective noun for geese a gathering uh, if anybody does know it please pop it in the comments below um, but I'm following a uh, uh, a very loose sort of form of the flying V formation for these geese as they do tend to form these lovely V shapes in the sky and I'm also uh, varying the size of them as well because of course some will be closer to us so they look a little larger and some will be uh, towards the back of the formation so they will look a little smaller and now just for a final little spattering I should just say that this dark colour that I've been using um, for the land is a mixture of uh, burnt sienna and neutral tint just to sort of tie in with the rest of the painting uh, but here we are, this is the uh, finished painting I'm really pleased with how this one has come out, I'm really pleased with how it looks and I really hope that you guys enjoyed uh, watching the video too uh, any questions or comments please pop them below uh, please also consider checking out my Patreon page for more videos if you're interested by following the link below. Huge thanks to all of you who've already done that. Uh, but that's all for me this week, so I wish you a wonderful rest of the week, wherever you are and whatever you're up to, and uh, very happy painting. <laughs>